Hey, hey, everybody. It is good seeing uh, all five of you in here. Um, I'm about to bring Will on. Um, we got everybody lined up in the chat. So uh, let's bring William Martin on. William, hello. How's it going? Pretty good. How about you? It is very good. Good, uh, good hearing from you again. And beautiful backyard there, by the way. Thank you. Um, how have you been, by the way? How have... Uh, oh. Hang on, I'm getting a echo because um, my YouTube was open. Okay, cool. I'm good now. How have you been? How have you been uh, paying your bills? <laughs> um, I mean, everything's pretty much come to a dead stop. Um, I mean, luckily for us, we had a lot of stuff in the pipeline, and we, we've had some really good clients that haven't asked um, – for deposits back. I mean, they know what's going on. They're watching the news. Okay. Um, they've, you know, they've been communicating with us and most of them plan to reschedule. Um, we actually had one corporate client who paid like half up front and we've been working with them for years and like, no, we have to cancel. They're not going to reschedule it, but we've got another event booked with you. Uh, later in the year and we said okay well we can carry forward your deposit to the next one and they're like don't even worry about it they're like just keep it we know what's going on mm -hmm. and uh we'll pay the deposit for the next one so we've we've been lucky we've been we've had some really good clients are these then, all um, like long time clients that have been doing this or kind of new clients most of them are, are long okay, time good. i mean we've had, had a few new ones uh but even a lot of that they come from referrals or they uh, see stuff on the website and just, I mean, most people have just been really accommodating. So awesome. Well, that's really good to hear. Um, you were doing live events and you were doing your own photography studio, right? Kind of more closed session photography. Well, well, even, even my own stuff is a lot of events. Um, so I do some studio stuff. Um, but a lot of what I do has become events. So when I'm not, um, you know, doing the dance stuff that we've worked on together, I'm shooting conventions and conferences with, oh, okay. you know, 10 to 15,000 people. Um, I'm shooting, um, you know, product photography, magazine covers, a uh, little bit of everything. And all that has come to a dead stop, even the things that don't con involve live events. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's, um, you know, even even like one of my clients is Skechers Shoes, you know, and I, I would shoot stuff for them either in their warehouse or in their in different stores. Um, and even that's come to a dead stop because the stores are closed and they're just a lot of the wording on what they're allowed to do is kind of a gray area. Um, mm. So like part of their work has come to a complete stop stop their productions come to a complete stop pretty much um but they've got a few people in the office just still handling things like payroll and hr and things like that awesome so have you had any gigs or are are kind of new type of gigs starting to come up in your world or like i get that all of your old style of gigs are out the window is, is anything new coming up I've, I've actually had a lot of people locally recently asking about graduation photos Okay. Uh, because you've got a lot of uh, schools locally or a lot of schools everywhere now that they're just not having their graduation ceremonies or they're doing something different. Um, so I've had a lot of parents, um, you know, some of them from the high school that my daughter went to and some of them just from the local area that are contacting me saying, Hey, we want to do, uh, you know, some graduation photos because there's not going to be a graduation ceremony. And even that's been tough because a lot of them want to do parks or beaches and that's all closed. So mm -hmm. we can't do that without risk of being ticketed or fined. Um, and so, are, are you, and even me. Oh, okay. uh, sorry. I was going to say, are you finding that a lot of the, a lot of your, um, How, how do I put this? I heard a, I heard an echo and got distracted, but, um, um, are you finding that your, um, business can be changed, um, and kind of 
uh, all right, let me let me rephrase this from from where I was getting at originally. Um, are you finding that the services that you can offer, like professional beach photography, that can't be replicated? But are you finding that people are starting to replicate any any work that could be done indoor photography or you know small little photography? Are your clients just handling that themselves? Some some of them are. Um, okay. I I had a client who I mean we we do a lot of stuff as far as photography. One of the things we do is photo booths. Um, okay. So I had a client that had a photo booth scheduled for June uh, for a graduation party up in the Hollywood Hills, and they had to. It was they were actually renting a house up there for this huge party, and because they couldn't rent the home, it was an Airbnb. They um, they said they have to reschedule. And they don't know when they're going to reschedule. So I said, okay. I said, well, you can carry over your deposit until you actually have the party. Or if you want to do something else, if you want to do some graduation photos, that, you know, we'll make it work. And same thing. They said, great. Will, you still there? Well, you got a little bit choppy there. I'm going to resend you. Oh, I'm actually going to um, remove you from the stream and have you log back on. But um, what I'd like to do, if you can still hear me, um, hopefully you can, is bring our next guest on. Um, I have a friend, Coral, and she has been working in this industry quite a bit. Hey, I can hear you. Okay, I got you back now. Okay, cool. Um. So, I, like I was saying, they, long story short, they, they wow. ended up actually just doing it themselves. Um, the whole photo shoot. The, yeah, the beaches and stuff were closed. And they said, oh, well, let's go out to this uh, poppy field that everybody goes to out in Antelope Valley. And, um, you know, I, I said, well, the same thing. It's, you know, it's like a, a national park or a state park or whatever, county park, whatever it is. Um, I said, we can get ticketed for that. And it's, you know, we have to make sure that we have clearance because that's my business license and my business insurance that I'm putting on the line for that. So they just ended up doing it themselves. They went out there and they, I mean, they just yeah. did their own thing with like, you know, cell phone camera or, and just did something. Um, yeah. And I'm finding so, the same thing with my, with my clients and they're just, doing their own lighting and doing their own stream. Yeah. Um, Cause I kind of changed my business into a streaming service to right. try to get the upper hand on this, but a lot of people are just doing it themselves. So. I mean, the, what I have found is you, cause I, I do have some things coming up now that just came up in the last week or so. That's good. Um, and you have to find a way to be flexible and be accommodating and then make yourself stand out from everyone else. You have to offer, um, not just the best service, but you have to offer something that they can't, excuse me, they can't do themselves or that they're not going to go and find someone else to do it real quick. Yeah. Or a so, service that they don't want to handle themselves. You know? Correct. Um, so one of them is uh, we do a lot of stuff for the Orange County Department of Education. Um, they have several campuses that are considered like continuation schools. Um, you know, some of these people for one reason or another are graduating late. They're going to this other campus. A lot of it's like an independent type study thing, but they still do a graduation ceremony for them. And we've been working with them for a couple of years and we'll go on the day of their graduation ceremony and we'll set up a studio on site and we'll do their cap and gown photos because they don't have a traditional senior portrait day. Um, and then we'll photograph the graduation ceremony for them. And then we sell portrait packages to the parents and families and everything. And you know, it's, it's a, it's a nice little thing. Cause we're only there for a couple of hours. Um, and they can't have their traditional graduation ceremony, but they still wanted to do something. So they're going to do like a, a drive in type thing, um, at a huge church in orange County by the beach, um, oh, be where cool. they're going to set, they're going to set up a stage and everybody's going to drive up in their cars like a drive in and, what they're doing is they're still having a day where they're going to come to the campus and they're going to pick up their cap and gown. So they said, would you be willing to come in on those days that they're going to pick up their cap and gown and still offer portraits? 
I said, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing else going on right now. So I might as well. Um, and then they said, well, the same thing. Um, we can set you up a, a space during the graduation ceremony somewhere away from the stage as people are driving in, but jump out of their car. They can take a photo if they didn't do it on the pickup day. They can take a family photo real quick and everybody stays socially distanced like they're supposed to. And, um, you know, that way, because I've been working with them for so long, they, they told me straight out, they're like, we, you know, we know the trouble you're going through. So we want to help you out. We still want you to be part of this. It's been a tradition. So well, that's awesome. Um, we have a uh, we have a friend on my friend Coral. Uh, she's an okay. excellent lighting technician, and uh, obviously, like both of us, she is completely out of work. She well, I'll bring her into the stream now. Hi, Coral. Good morning. Good morning. Good How's morning. it going? Let me see if I could arrange. Hey, there we go. <laughs> um, good seeing you again. How have you been? I've been well, considering. Good to see yeah. you too. Good, How are good. you guys? Hanging in there, surviving, working on everything I can. Um, yeah. But so you were you were mentioning you were uh, you, your your husband owns a a remodeling business or construction business. What is it? Yeah, he he doesn't own it. He's the foreman. Um, it is a home remodel business, and okay. they are just full of work right now. They are doing really good. So they're considered essential and they haven't stopped. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and your name is William, right? Correct. William. Yes. Yes. Sorry, Coral. Um, this is William. I work with him with Dupree Dance. Um, he owns his own photography business out in California. And oh. uh, he's going to kind of, after this, we're kind of going to discuss some other freelancing methods that I know, Will, you said you've been working on, like teaching, what is that? Teaching uh, Chinese or teaching English to Chinese people? <laughs> uh, not exactly, no, but just. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Well, we'll discuss that later then. But uh, sure. yeah, um, Coral, this is my friend, Will. We tour together with Dupree Dance. Nice to meet you, William. Very nice so, to meet you. Um, you, um, you mentioned to me you wanted to, what was it, like build their living, build their living room entertainment center, um, supply all their audiovisual for their entertainment center? Yes. Yeah, I would like to install home theaters um, for people. So I coming on here, I wanted to see if I could um, pick you guys' brain about starting business. And um, William, how, how long have you had your, your studio? Um, it has been since 2006. So that is 14 years. Wow. See, I need to talk to people who are established and Caleb, you're very innovative. And so here I am, I have prepared, I hope you don't mind my use of notes. I have prepared Not seven. At all. I love it, I love it. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, um, I'll just start if that's okay. So uh, what would you say would be the first five steps a person should take when starting a business? Uh, first of all, ha business specifically. I'm sorry. Starting your business specifically or sure. just, we'll just starting any, any business in general. Well, I, I know that uh, starting a business probably has certain things that each one would need to do, but We'll talk about what I want to do specifically. Yeah, yeah, because well, every every business is different. So, like, you know, I can't, I can't speak on somebody's farming business because I don't, I don't. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I mean, they're they're different, they're different, but there's a lot of things that are going to cross over. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the first thing I would say is have a plan. I mean, that's that's going to be the biggest part. Um, you want to have short-term goals and long-term goals as far as uh, what you want to do, what you're looking to accomplish and how you're going to do it. And whether you, for different types of businesses, I'm uh, speaking on photography, um, there are people out there that conduct classes, people out there that conduct workshops and 
Um, some of them specialize specifically in people starting their own business and they will have a general outline of a business plan that you can go in and modify and um, gear it towards your specific genre or, um, you know, in other cases you could gear it towards another business if you had to. Um, the second thing I would say is have money to have it started. It's going to cost you money one way or another, whether it's for uh, product or advertising or just to keep yourself going in the time that you're getting it started. Um, it's not always easy to get it started right off the bat, doing it hundred percent of the time. A lot of people will start a business kind of as a side thing while they still have a nine to five. Um, but for people like us that, we don't have a nine to five. Um, that's a whole different boat. So, I mean, you definitely want to have the money to keep things going in the meantime. Um, whatever, yeah. another thing is whatever you're doing, you want to have knowledge of it and not just general knowledge, but you want to have somewhat expertise in it. Um, I had somebody approach me who was advertising themselves as a business coach and a life coach and wanted to, um, they wanted me to buy into their service and say, oh, I'm gonna help you, you know, bring your business up from what it is now to a six figure or seven figure business or whatever. And I was like, okay, great. Um, you know, what are you, what are you gonna do to help me? So, oh, well, you, you know, you buy into it and we'll talk about details. Okay, that's fine. What experience do you have? Oh, well, I'm a member of this and this and this. Well, great. What other businesses have you helped? Come to find out he hadn't helped any. <laughs> so he had bought into a program to do business coaching, but he had no, basically no portfolio of who he had helped out. He was looking for guinea pigs and wanted, wanted us to pay for it. So there's a lot of savvy consumers out there and it's really easy to Google someone, Google their experience, um, Google reviews and see their background yeah. as far as business or reviews or anything like that. Um, so you want to establish that as much as you possibly can, um, whether it's experience that you already have or whether it's um, like for you, for instance, you want to do, you want to do uh, home theater installs, but you were doing um, lighting for events before, correct? I've worked in the AV industry for the past five or six years. So lighting is what I specialized in. Yes, but. Okay. So you don't have anything specific to home theater. Well, I've worked to, with to show people. equipment, including TVs. We call them monitors in my industry. I've set them sure. up for live events multiple times and audio equipment, speakers. But on a live event scale, everything is so much bigger. Correct. So I would, act, I would be scaling down, essentially. Right. My, my thing with that is, though, you like if I'm going to hire somebody that's going to come in and do a, a home theater install or any kind of install in my home, um, for, you know, 95% of the population out there, their home is their largest investment. And yeah. this is their first impression to a lot of people, whether it be family or guests or anybody that comes over. So if I'm paying somebody to come in and do any kind of install, I want to make sure they're doing a really good job. Um, that, that's what I was getting at. So, you know, you want to have a portfolio specifically to that. You may be able to show them photos of huge installs from concerts or whatever that you've done, but that doesn't show me anything that you can install a flat screen on my wall and do recessed speakers in the ceilings or in the wall or anything like that, or hide all the wires. Um, those are what those consumers are going to be looking for. One way to get that is um, you want, whenever you do an install, you want to take pictures of it. So you have that for your portfolio, but to get started, if you can offer something like that at a, discounted or even a free rate, even if it's for friends and family, just mm -hmm. to get that started, get that going, um, you know, instead of sitting around and waiting, well, no, this is my price and I can't do it for any less than this. Well, no, you need to get your foot in the door. You need to get your feet wet and you need to get that out there to show people. And Absolutely. then you have something to showcase, not only in a portfolio, um, but on Instagram, on Twitter, on whatever. I mean, social media is huge this day and it's one of the biggest marketing platforms there is out there and the cheapest um, comparative to what, you know, large marketing companies have been doing for years. 
Um, so you mentioned, um, not to cut you off, I just wanted sure. to uh, side point on something you had mentioned before because it was a part of another question I had. You talked about classes. And so one of my questions was, um, when starting a business, do you think particular classes, someone should invest their time and money in them? For, for example, do you think business management would be a critical course for a small business owner? I, I think as much knowledge as you can gain is always going to help you. I agree. Um, as far as the investment to gain that knowledge, that is, that's the tipping point. That's, you know, it, it comes down to a point of how much is my time worth and how much am I willing to invest? Um, I am a big fan of, um, there's a TV show on, um, one of the NBC networks, I think it's CNBC, it's called The Profit with Marcus Lemonis. And he invests in small businesses and he helps people to build their business up. And he is huge on business plans and knowing your numbers and knowing how to manage your business, uh, knowing what your inventory is, knowing all of your costs of goods, you know, things like that. So as far as taking a business management class to teach you how to keep everything organized, um, you know, because you're going from, you know, potentially doing AV installations for someone else on a big scale, working for other companies to now you're doing this for yourself. Um, I mean, I, I definitely think that would be very helpful. But then again, like I said, it just comes down to the time and money investment. You know, right. do you do you want to invest the money to take online college courses and have it take, you know, a full semester, two semesters, three semesters? Or do you want to invest um, maybe close to the same or a little more money up front and do what would right now be only online, but a workshop to get you a lot of that information in a very short amount of time? OK, workshop is a good idea. I hadn't thought about that one yet. Um, let me ask you this. Since starting a business is so tedious, um, at what point during that process do you think a person should order their business cards? Immediately. Immediately, okay. <laughs> Immediately, because you want, um, especially when you're working for yourself, you want to have something about yourself that you can has have as a conversation starter um whether business cards is the easiest and cheapest um you can have t-shirts made i don't know if you can see it but okay, i have yeah. a bunch of t-shirts with my logo on them um and i have hats and i have whatever that i i don't use when i'm working for other companies like when i was doing the dance stuff i was basically what they call white labeling for another company um that had the contract and i was working under them. So I don't promote my business for that. But when I'm doing my own thing, I'm wearing my stuff with my logo on it as much as possible. Um, because part of my investment and in time into going into another event or another job is I want leads out of that to where I can get the next gig. Yeah, that makes sense. So business cards, I mean, you could be in the grocery store wearing a t-shirt that says that and someone could be behind you in line. Hey, I was looking for somebody to do a home theater install. Great. This is what we do. We're here local. Here's my card. Um, you know, I'd love to talk to you about what you're looking to do and you know what, how we can help you out with that. Will, um, do you think there's other revenues of advertising besides business cards to make um, Rachel established besides business cards, such as like you could, um, there's always Facebook groups about home renovations and theaters that you could go on and just start really simple using, using your husband's expertise and just kind of going, cause you're going to be getting your husband's expertise in home renovations. Anyway, go into those Facebook groups and start commenting about very simple things. Even if you just have to start asking your husband everything, because ultimately if you're going into business with your husband, I think your husband is going to be teaching you a lot of things as it is. So just start making your presence known in those, in those communities to those other home renovators and 
maybe you'll start to get some eyes seeing you saying, oh, I, I, I at least recognize her name now. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I think Facebook groups is a great, uh, social media in general, but especially Facebook groups is a great source because a lot of that you can do stuff for free. Um, so if you have any little experience in um, Photoshop or you can create like a digital postcard, um, some kind of little digital ad that you can copy and paste. You know, you have a nice little ad and you put your, your text or your copy in there um, and just start bombarding Facebook groups. And I wouldn't limit myself to just maybe something that your husband's involved in. I would look at um, do-it-yourself groups. I would look at, I mean, there's, there's groups for everything on Facebook. You can look for um, home theater groups. You can look for... Um, you know, people that are really, people may be really into um, techie stuff, audiovisual stuff, but maybe they're not that handy in doing the installs. Um, there's a lot of yard sale groups that are really close knit local stuff. And you'd be surprised how many local businesses advertise on there. There may be somebody on there selling something out of their garage, but then you've got um, a home, ba home based business that's selling flower arrangements and someone else is doing wedding photography and someone else is doing, you know, some other type of service. So don't, don't limit yourself, you know, try to, um, try to expand it into many, as many of those groups as possible. And all, all that is going to be free to do that kind of advertising. All it takes is your time. Um, it, it, besides it, that, the, the actual advertising itself on Facebook and Instagram is, I mean, you can set how much you want to spend. It's very cheap. Okay, awesome. Um, that gives me that gives me a direction to go in. So my next question is, uh, I have my own viewpoint on this, but I would just like to get both of your viewpoints. How do you rate success? If you're happy, honestly. Perfect. Uh, I, yeah, I don't. I, I mean, I I know we've been putting hustling and grinding on a pedal stool for the last however many years um i think we're doing that again now that we're in a recession but i mean i i i don't like pushing people that are happy with their nine to five job that supports their family i i don't i wouldn't want to tell them to go do something greater than that if they're honestly happy doing just that then yeah there's there's no need. I'm I myself am a supporter of outside nine to five jobs and doing your own thing. If you want to do something greater than a nine to five or yeah. working for somebody that you don't like, absolutely. Nine to five isn't for everybody. No, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> and uh, back to your uh, business real quick. Um, I wanted to talk to you about starting small with installs because you. Uh, I wanted to ask, do you what what was your like niche of install businesses? Was it going to be kind of like mansions or you know <laughs> any houses, or are you kind of going for super innovative new technology, or are you going for more just classic looks that's well done? Like, what's your what's your advantage? Is it technology? Is it how how fancy the final product looks, or well, honestly, I was thinking about beginning with the things that I could do single-handedly. Okay. For example, uh, setting up something completely wireless and offering that to begin with. Um, As in, like, a wireless HDMI or, like, you know, a, a comp components like that wireless or just wireless control? Like smart home wireless okay. things connect through Bluetooth to um, their Alexa or whatever their device may be so that I don't have to have someone else that, could, for example, cut through walls to run cable, things that I may not be able to do myself um, right away. So. Okay. I, I've got a, um, I've got advice for you on that. Okay, good. So, um, when you're talking about helping people set up their, their wireless things and their technology, where are you located by the way? Right now I'm in South Phoenix. Okay. It's a temporary location. That's fine. Um, I would, 
look into things like senior centers where um, like a community center for, for senior citizens where they congregate, they have classes, activities, things like that. Ask them if you can advertise, put up a little flyer, leave your business cards. Um, I mean, even before this, but more, even more so now, there are, with all the social distancing, there are a lot of seniors that are trying to use technology to talk to friends and family members and things like that. It's very intimidating. Um, and it's something that they could definitely use help with. Um, going beyond that and doing other installs, I would even check with, um, I know Ikea used to source out all their installs for stuff. Um, for installs and deliveries, I would check with them and see if they're still doing that kind of stuff. I mean, things like that. Look, I mean, it's, you're not going to get into, because they, they do a lot of their own things, the, the big stores like the Best Buys and the things like that. Um, I mean, Ikea is a huge store, but they're very much do it yourself, that you build right. it yourself and you do all the stuff yourself. So they, like they outsource contractors to do their kitchen installations. They outsource people to do their deliveries. Um, they outsource people that'll even just build your bookcase for you at your home. Um, That's cool. so I did not I, know that. yeah, I, I would look into that. I would definitely, especially for the wireless and technology thing, look into the senior thing. Um, and that's, that's a whole nother thing on Facebook, look into senior groups and just offering that service. Um, you know, I, I think that could be a really good niche for you doing that kind of, uh, incorporating all the technology and things like that in the home to make it easier for them. Yeah, that's, that's great. No, uh, even... uh, sorry. Ahead, um, I was going to say, have you, have you studied up on your, um, wireless network protocols and how to, you know, uh, there, there's a lot that goes into wireless traffic. Have you oh, yeah. looked into that or are you going to outsource that to, you know, the, I'm the working super technical on... stuff that takes like, you know, five, eight years to learn. <laughs> That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. I'm working on putting together a list of the things that I, that I need to learn more about the things that, like that, for example, might take too long for me to um, be an expert at. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm still figuring out all the things that I need to put together to get this off the ground. Yeah, uh, I would say all the all the things that you need to learn, make a list of that and decide if you want to learn that or just outsource it. And outsourcing could be cheap. Um, I know there's a lot of unemployed technicians <laughs> out there right now. Um, I've, I mean, you're looking for people experienced in your field, but there, there is people that have been working, um, in network centers that know a lot about wireless technology that I'm sure wouldn't mind coming on a job with you and your husband and learning the background. Um, that being said, I want to touch base while Will is here on, um, kind of what I mentioned before was, it, uh, Will, I had recommended that Coral go to her husband's job sites while they're doing remodeling and just dress the part, look up, say hi. And when, when they, you know, worst comes to worst, if they ask why you're there, say we're an expanding entity of his business. I'm his wife and I'm coming just to, kind of get a background on this and see how it's done. Cause I think there's going to be a lot of things that you're not expecting technical right. things like, yeah, we have to get a, you're going to have to run wires through walls guaranteed. Um, and then you're going to run into issues like, well, we have to get this cable from here to there and there's no attic in the house and it's a floor set and there's, you know, the bottom of the house is all caved in. So yeah. <laughs> at that point, you, 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 nobody saw that issue coming. Um, right. And that's more of just a business practice. Do you go in and try to do it yourself or do you tell the business owner, hold off, you know, we're going to, we're going to hire some people to go under the house and do what they need to do. So um, I, I would highly recommend um, going, going with your husband and with, with, with what we've all learned today. Mm -hmm carry a notepad with you and just make notes of everything that's going to confuse you. And on the drive home, maybe not yeah. on the job site, talk with your husband. 
Right. I, I, I think that's a great idea. When, when you said look the part, I would, um, when, when we still do, we, we don't, when we get these shirts made, um, you know, I use them to go on the meetings, to go on to whatever. Um, we're not ordering them from the traditional screen printing place or embroidery place where you have to put in a huge order. I get mine from the swap meet. Um, I go to Walmart and I buy two or three shirts and I take them, my logo on a, on a USB stick and I, you know, negotiate with them a price. And I had, you know, I, I bought my shirts at Walmart, I think for $5 and took them to the indoor swap meet and they embroidered each shirt, I think for like seven or $8. Wow. wow. That's cool. So, I mean, you can start out having, you know, two or three shirts done and just use them for, you know, those kinds of things when you're going to meet with someone or if you're going to go, um, you know, on location with your husband as a consultant, um, you know, kind of thing. And from there, I mean, I now I've got so many piled up. I, I try to wear them all the time because, like I said, when I when I'm able to leave the house, it's it's a conversation starter. Yeah. OK. Um, so. What. I wanted you to list five habits that you think every successful business owner should have. Five habits. Um, consistency. Um, you, you have to be with, with whatever you're doing, you have to be consistent. And that's, that's one of my downfalls. Um, is having that, having that consistency, especially because right now this isn't the normal thing, having a normal schedule and things like that, but trying, staying with any type of a normal schedule and having that consistency that, you know, you still get up at six in the morning and you get up and do this and you check your emails and you, you know, put up some Facebook ads on groups or whatever, you know, things like that. Um, so consistency, um, constantly learning don't don't ever think that you're the expert that you're the know-all say all final word of everything there's always going to be someone who's going to know more than you um so always be on the lookout for um more knowledge and just constantly learning the new things well um, uh, real quick i want to i want to comment on consistency sure. because uh you said that's not your strength uh, that's not my strength either i think <laughs> not a lot of people's strengths um that being said, I think one issue with consistency and the kind of hustle grind culture that we've been brought up in is that when we hear consistent, let's see, we say, eh, I have to make myself a schedule. And then you make yourself a schedule, overload your schedule without even knowing it, and then try to consistently commit to that. And maybe you can get it for two, three days, maybe even a week, maybe a month. But I, I think one of the biggest, and I'm getting better at this, really. Um, one of the biggest things that helped me with consistency was cutting things out of my schedule and saying, uh, instead yeah. of trying to do three things today, I just want to do one. Mm -hmm. just, just complete one thing and do it right. Tomorrow, yeah. I'm going to do the same thing. And I can, I, if I plug seven days out of the week, I can get seven things accomplished in a week versus if I hustle and grind, yeah, I could get 14 or 21 things done in a week. But in three weeks, I'm going to be hugging the couch, wanting to nap for two days straight. And you know, ultimately, that's just going to cause me to slide back into inconsistency. So I think it's important not to overload ourselves. But yes, consistency is very key. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree with that completely. Um, yeah, you don't you definitely don't want to overload yourself. You want to have you know, realistic expectations, expectations, and you can always, you know, add to that schedule that you make for yourself, but whatever it is that you choose to do, you want to be consistent with it. Um, let's see what else. Um, one thing I would add it, for a business owner is, uh, oh, I just had it ordered in my head. The the ability and humility to eat crap for a while, and to 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 know that that if you if you want to if you want to achieve something and you're going to pull 
energy and effort away from a lot of things, things might suck for a little bit. Um, I mean, well, what's your take? I mean, I, I, I agree. You, I mean, you definitely, there has to be humility in being a business owner. Yeah. Um, even though you may know what you're saying is correct. I, I don't a hundred percent agree with the customers always right, but sometimes the customer needs to be educated and sometimes that needs to be done with kid gloves. Um, so you may have someone that says, Oh, I want you to do this. And I want, I want to uh, have this mounted this way. I want this kind of an install and I want it to do this. And you may know right off the bat, we can't do that. That's not possible. That's not the way it's done. But if you tell them like that, they put up a guard and it's going to turn them off. And, you know, you, you have to be flexible in a certain way to really um, communicate with that customer and educate them on, um, you know, what's, what's going to be most beneficial for them. Come to them with solutions, not yeah. just we can't do this, but have a solution instead. We can't do it this way, but we could do it this way. Or, or, I mean, sometimes you have to even show them if they, if they think that they think they know what they want and say, well, if we do it this way, this is what's going to happen. But if you want this, this may be a, a better solution for you on how to do it, mm -hmm. you know? So that way they, it's not just, it's not just a cut and dry. No, we can't do that. But you know, it, it's part of that educating them and, and just basically not making them feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Um, okay, I have another question. Um, do you have suggestions as to where I could buy gear for a lesser price than the normal public would have access to? Um, I, mean, I want to say Alibaba, but isn't that meant for resale? It it is, but I mean, I I don't think you have to have a resale number to buy from that. I mean that that's that's the easy straight answer is have a resale license, and there's there's streams of that to buy things wholesale. Um, but but that's not always. I mean, especially if you're starting out, um, you can look in look into reselling stuff off a of Craigslist off of offer up. You know, if you have, if you have a small um, area that you can store stuff and have kind of an inventory. Well, real quick, what, what, in, what gear or inventory are you buying? Sure. Is, it, is it stuff for installs or stuff for yeah. your own work? So it's stuff that would be going into client houses. Yeah. The things that I would need to purchase for their, for their theater, their TV, their speakers, their sound bar, their receiver, whatever the case may be. I would say it's going to be a lot of capital to buy all of that in advance. I would almost do it like the entertainment industry. where, And again, you'd have to go with your husband and see how the business on renovations works. I was envisioning something more like you come in. And after a couple consultations, um, pitch what you want to sell them or listen to what they want to have installed and then charge the client for that equipment. Or, you know, you, you would probably have to have a have some capital to buy that equipment up front, but at least get a gear list of what they want and what you're going to need versus just buying a bunch of gear. And, right. So on and a case by case basis. Yeah, take, well, definitely take. Well, go on. I, I mean, everything's going to be on a case by case basis. But what I've come to find out is people like people like to see preset packages as much as I don't like them. Um, yeah, people like that. So you can have a um, just so people can see what goes into it. Package A and B, or package A, B, and C for different types of installs. Okay. Yeah. Um, just so they can see. Okay, you know, here's. Here's a 65 inch TV and here's a um, swivel TV bracket and here's a 
15 foot directional HDMI. Um, here's your 4K receipt, you know, all that stuff. So here's package A and it costs this much and here's package B and it costs this much. And it's going to, you know, average be six hours for installation just to give them a general idea. And then if they say, well, I like this, but I want this and I want it installed this way, then you can customize things to that particular install, but at least it gives people a general idea. Okay. Is, awesome. is she is she buying that equipment just for the photo or for a video or for the knowledge? No, I wouldn't even have it like like you have the equipment. I would just have a, a list. Yeah. Like, that way when you meet with people, I'm whether to it be capital out. Yeah. So you don't need yeah, to I, you want to make it as simple as possible. So whether you're meeting with them in person or if you're doing um, over the phone, if you're doing a video chat like this, that you can um, shoot them a real quick PDF and say, here's, you know, a bedroom installation with a 32 inch TV. Here's a living room installation with a 65 inch TV. Here's a, um, a Sonos surround sound, you know, music in every single room in your house kind of installation, you know, that different, you can have a couple different options. I mean, don't go too complicated. And don't the, the fewer for something like that, the fewer options you have, the better when you give people too many options, um, it's easy to confuse people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a starting point. And then if someone says, oh, well, you know, I like this, but I had this kind of TV mic. Great. We can customize a package just for you to get you exactly what you want. Perfect. And uh, how much of that could you say could be uh, outsourced to visualizers and it, you know, like lighting, uh, there's lighting visualizers, there's CAD mm -hmm. programs where you could put in your TV. So, put in your TVs after catting out their house. And then there's also like pre-visualizations for audio. It's kind of, it's kind of weird how that works, but they can like right. take the room and then put a speaker in one corner of the room. And exactly. say, this is exactly what it's going to sound like. I could tell that if you're standing next to your closet, you're not going to hear queen as well as if you're standing in the kitchen. Um, I, I, and then I'm an extra speaker there. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's software for that. For instance, I know for the photography, um, for people who do a lot of portraits and in-person sales, there is, there's a program that is available where I can go into someone's house. I can take a picture of their living room or their wall, um, and input photos from a portrait session we've already done. And it's with that in-person sales, it's, it's a way to show them exactly how the portraits will look on that wall, basically to get them to buy something bigger and spend more money. Um, so there is a very good possibility. There is something like that for home theater installs where you can go in with your cell phone, take a picture of someone's wall and say, here's what this TV will look like. Here's where we're going to put the speakers, you know, things like that. Is that something you want to invest in right from the very beginning? I don't know. Well, um, where I was thinking she should plug that in is after she, after you go to your, a customer's houses a couple times and mm -hmm. see how things work and you get a solid pitch pitch it to the customer if they sound interested um and i would have these two people that i'm about to mention lined up ahead of time have somebody that can do the pre-visualization in cad and then have someone that can do that 3d audio for you um mm -hmm. and have them lined up at and use that as a as a paid service um that i mean that's you don't charge that's that much for it to the customer just say if you want to we can map out your house i'll show you the results it's 99 dollars right. uh, i don't know if, it, if you could against me I, with that much but <laughs> i think i think that's a good option but i think um you part of that is knowing your clientele because that's not something that everybody's going to want to spend money on you know someone right. who's buying you know, a hundred inch flat screen TV to put on their wall and, you know, the, the biggest Bose sound system they can get, you know, that just money's no object. Sure. They'll spend money on that. Um, but your average consumer who, you know, wants the 65 inch TV that's on sale at Costco and just doesn't know how to mount it themselves and doesn't know how to set up a surround sound system. They're maybe not going to spend the extra hundred dollars on the 3d visualization. Yeah, um, my, one one of my things I always look at is I try to keep it as simple as possible. 
Um, and that, that goes back to if you give them too many options, it kind of confuses them. If it if you know your client and you know that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to an area where, yes, this is, you know, million dollar homes and they're looking to spend this kind of money. Sure. They want to know they're getting the best and that could be a service that they're looking at. Um, but for the most part, I, I would try to keep it as simple as possible. OK. Awesome. Well, you guys have been great. I'm out of questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's awesome, and that's okay. Um, I, I'm I'm glad we talked. Um, Me too. Yeah, I would I would say uh, step by step to getting your business underway is uh, consult with your husband and just get an education and go on those jobs. Figure out what resource list you need for all the things that you might you're either incapable of or just don't want to do. Um, and then as you go on these jobs and talk with clients, get a client list of people that seem kind of interested. And then once you think it's time to launch your business, um, it, and I'm, of course your business is kind of point of like, wow, the renovation is taking place. So it might be hard to double back on some of those clients, but if some of those clients are having their homes renovated again, or just regardless, go back to them on a, on a, cold call and say hey you did business with us back then um our business has grown i want to see if you would be interested in this some of them might say yeah. yes because it's it's a husband and wife thing and they've been doing business with your husband for a long time um and then i think if you if you just start really small and i, I don't know if i mentioned this if you start super simple with things that every installation company is going to be required to do like you know hanging speakers running wire to those speakers mm -hmm. and hanging a tv start simple be able to deliver those things very well and then grow from there and i think a lot of your clients i i i know everybody wants to pitch high-tech stuff i think a lot of your clients and your first customers will come just from clients knowing your husband and knowing you as a result and kind of going this is this is this is a better option than me just going to Best Buy. You know, I get to use I get to use these two people. They're doing this together. It's kind of yeah. cute. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that could draw that initial business to you as opposed to going out and appealing to technical um, incentives for the client. Okay. Perfect. So, well, thank you for uh, bring, coming in. Um, while you're here, I, I know we're all, uh, I know we're all struggling a bit. Will you had mentioned some other freelancing methods that you've been working on? Do you have, or, or did I just hear you wrong? Have you been doing other weird freelance things, or you've kind of gone out on some weird tangents before? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I do all kinds of stuff. Um, I've, I've done, I've done so many things over the years. I, I mean, I've, I've been doing photography full time for, um, like I said, since 2006, that's all I do now. Um, I before mean, that I've, I've done a bunch of other stuff, but I, one of the things I love myself about photography is there's so many aspects that it can go. It's hard to, um, hard to get bored or hard to, hard to get in a rut. Um, I mean, there's certain things that I like more than others. Um, I do still do the occasional wedding or event like that, but not, I don't market it so much. Um, it's usually by referral or uh, word of mouth, past clients, things like that. Um, most of what I do is, you know, big events. I do. Do you, um, do, you do anything outside of photography? I used to, I don't so much anymore. Okay. Um, okay. I, I mean, I've, I've mm -hmm. taught photography to people. Um, I was, um, I, I've taught personal lessons. I've taught group lessons to like my chamber, uh, uh, chamber of commerce, um, to other business owners about how to do things on their own and expensively, but at the same time, um, encouraging them to hire a professional whenever possible, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, I've, I've done 
consultant stuff for people with other businesses on suggesting like this, how to get things started. Um, but out of photography or business, not, not a whole lot anymore. Okay, okay. I've, I've been spending a lot of this time, honestly, at home doing projects and stuff that I didn't have time to do when I was on the road. Yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, that it, if you have the savings to lay around and get those projects done and get things done that just better you in the long term, that could be a very beneficial thing. I've known people that invested two weeks into learning how to type faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not that it's not that sexy, but. It, when it when it comes time to actually needing to type stuff, you know, you figure sure. your work your work's going twice as fast. Yeah. Um, I yeah I I mean stuff like that. Like at at one point, I I think I was able to type like sixty five words a minute. Oh wow. Um, but I I mean now it's just typing emails and stuff stuff that's real yeah. short. Um. Yeah. What not. You, go ahead. I was gonna say, what would you say about like short jab income, like? uh voiceovers um i mean obviously you know, the voiceover actor scene is much bigger than just going in and trying you know trying out and getting a part i know there's an auditioning process but is there mm -hmm. is there outlets like that um uh, there there is a lot of that is um I mean, the voiceover stuff isn't completely stopped right now because a lot of that can be done remotely. But um, along with that, if they're going to work with someone remotely, they're going to work with someone that they've worked with before that they know has the equipment in their home yeah. to be able to do that kind of stuff because you can't bring somebody into a studio or anything like that right now. Um, I mean, film production and things like that have come to a complete stop. Um, pretty much unless they're doing it kind of guerrilla shoots where they just run and gun. Um, there's been a few things of celebrities that are just kind of doing their own stuff from their home um, and doing yeah. things remotely in video chats like this. I mean, AMC has like three shows right now of celebrities from the walking dead that are doing a show like this every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen a, I've seen a lot of shows kind of come out. Um, of people's own variety. And that's why I wanted to start my own. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's finding that, that niche that, um, attracts people to watch. Yeah. I, w I wouldn't um, say that's a short term income though. Um, no, but I, I'm always all for having, um, just different avenues of residual income. Yeah. In. I mean, I, what I was, one of the things I was looking into before this all started was, I mean, we do photo booths for events, but I was looking into doing photo booth installs um, for other businesses, like for car dealerships mm -hmm. and stuff, where we would lease them the photo booth. We'd come in and install it. We'd maintain it. We would, you know, supply them with their database of customers that have come in and used it and things like that. And they just pay. They never own it. They pay a monthly fee. And when the new one comes out, we bring them a brand new one. So it's more like a long-term rental you're getting them? Yeah, we, sign up, we would sign them up for like a on at least a year basis, um, you know, and then when that year's up, if they want to keep that same one, they can, if there's uh, another option, a newer one with different features or a different look um, that's available, then we would make that an option for them as well. Gotcha. Cool. I'm just trying to get a list of uh, um, short-term incomes that I can give to people as recommendations. I mean, aside from, um, I've been, I've been selling electronics on offer up lately, um, mm -hmm. going around to Goodwill, finding electronics that are undervalued because they didn't. Our Goodwills are all closed. Really? Yeah. A couple of mine are open. <laughs> no, our, our stuff, like all the retail stores are all closed. Um, I mean, Home Depot, I mean, unless Walmart is open and Target is open and then the supermarkets and the home improvement stores, are open. that's about it. Yeah. Well, I'd have to check again then because I went to Goodwill like three weeks ago and stocked up a little <laughs> bit, but most of just what I've been selling is, is my old electronics that have been sure. sitting around without use, but it's, it, it is getting me a good background on how the offer up scene works and flipping stuff like that. I'm finding 
small stuff sells so much better than uh, larger equipment because you could ship it internationally. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one, one thing, if, if you have, I, I know a few people that are doing it, and I thought of it um, just because I sold one of my own. Um, if you have the capital and you have the space, one thing that is really good is cars. Um, oh, it's flipping cars. Yeah. Well, and you don't have to do much. If you go to like an auto auction, you go to a, a local impound yard and they usually have an auto auction once a month and you can buy cars as is for like 300 bucks and then turn around and sell them for like a thousand. As long as they run, you can, I, you can uh, sell a thousand dollar car all day long. I met a guy. He lived next to, he lived probably two hours from Mexico and yeah. his business was flipping cars that he bought yeah. from Mexico. That's a little bit tougher uh, to get them across the border, but yeah, if you if you have a, a police impound yard or even just a tow yard, just the the local tow companies that have they tow cars for the police department and they have their own impound yard. If the stuff doesn't get picked up, they sell them, like just depending on how busy they are, at least once a month. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, so, I didn't know that. I mean, there, there's always alternative. Avenue Street. I mean, I, I've, I've seen it on a small scale where someone bought one or two at a time that they could just fit in their driveway or park in front of their house. Um, there was one guy by me years ago. I, I bought a car from him and I found out he was doing that. Um, he had a gate that went into his backyard. He had like a dozen cars just sitting in his backyard. And he told me, he's like, yeah, I bought these for like two or $300 a piece and they're all for sale for between 800 and a thousand. Wow. And I sell out every single weekend. If you so have every, an HOA every, though. They're not going to be. Yeah. You, I mean, you know, he had like a house house. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So well, he had hey his guys. own backyard to do that. <laughs> yeah. so sorry to interrupt. I just wanted you to know that I have to run, but. Oh, I, you're fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to. Yeah, of course. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to get out of here too in a yeah. minute. Absolutely. So, uh, it was great meeting you. Keep in touch. If I can. Good to meet you too. Awesome. If, Thanks, uh, if you have any other questions, I, I mean, I'm more than happy to help. Okay. Thank you guys. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks, girl. Thanks. Bye. You too. Cool. Well, well uh, unless you have anything else to add, um, the goal of this, the goal of this was to kind of talk about freelancing uh, mm -hmm. after COVID. And I think we've done that a little bit. I think we've established that um, all our old industries are dead and we have to reinvent ourselves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, my biggest advice to everybody is just, you know, be flexible. Don't be afraid to try new things and just be, um, be accommodating to clients and that those are going to be the people that are going to get the gigs. Also make sure you're following up with your clients, every single one of Definitely. them, no Definitely. matter, no matter what their position was, because mm -hmm. you know, the, the, un unless they had a mountain of savings to sit on, if they were like a regular business owner and was operating within their means, mm -hmm everybody's hurting right now. Everybody's oh, yeah. on the same base and everybody could use a friendly hello. And, you know, everybody could know. use a friendly hello. And there's, there's people that want to still use those services and, you know, everybody's looking for any kind of help they can. I, you know, like I, I have things that I've put out now to past clients that I'm offering them. Um, I mean, it helps both of us. I'm offering them discounts, but if they pay in full upfront, Okay. You know, that kind of a thing. So they're, they're saving some money and then it's, it's helping me bring revenue in. Yeah. And it, it helps you stay relevant too. I think yeah. staying relevant is such a important thing right now because uh, people are forgetting things. We've, we've been in isolation for two months. People honestly forget who worked for them. Yeah. <laughs> so no, we've, we've up and, uh, yeah, yeah, we've, we've been in touch with, with, with <laughs> We've been in touch with a lot of our clients because there's, I mean, we have a lot of long-term clients that we do the same event for them year after year after year. And like, as soon as one event's done, they're like, okay, we have the date for next year. Here it is. Go ahead and put it in your calendar. Um, and we've just been going through the calendar, you know, just like what you said and saying, Hey, you know, is this event still happening? Is anything going to be changing? Um, you know, even if it's not happening, offering them alternatives, you know, telling people about like the, the drive-through graduation that, that, this one client yeah. is doing and saying, Hey, if you want to do something like this, we will accommodate however you're going to do your event. And, you know, we'd love to offer our service to your clients or students or whatever. So as a photographer, have you had to add any gear to your arsenal? Um, 
to kind of be a little more cutting edge? Um, have, have you invested in anything at the, since the start of this, should I say? I, have, I haven't invested anything. I haven't invested too much in the start of this. I, I have a lot of gear. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. a gearhead. I mean, there's, there's, there's always stuff that I, I, like before this all happened, I was looking to buy a new camera body. Um, and I was waiting until after the taxes were done and this and that. I was like, oh, great. I'm going to go buy this new camera body. It was $7,000. Um, now I've kind of put that on the back burner. Yeah, obviously, because <laughs> that's 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 a large chunk of money right now to be just, just having a once. camera right now <laughs> it's right. a good thing so um but i there's a lot of stuff that i have that um i i have i i have a set of flashes that i use for another dance event um it's for irish dancing and when i do photos of their awards I set up flashes all the way in the back of the convention hall and shoot up to the stage. Um, so they're very high powered wireless flashes. So stuff like that, like I can take those and go outside somewhere and they're battery powered. I don't need, I don't need to plug into an AC source. Um, I can take a generator if I need to. And I, I have flashes that I can like overpower the sun. So that way, if I'm shooting in the middle of the day and there's weird shadows, I can still make it look like it was done in a studio. No. Um, so stuff like that. I have, um, I mean, just, just a part of my business is I, I, I try to offer things that other people don't offer um, from the get-go. I Years ago, my, my first, first big event um, was for NBC. And I was working with another... Um, partner at the time getting into events he he was doing um celebrity events and he was doing like barn bat mitzvahs in like hollywood and west la beverly hills all that um in these huge mansions and he brought me in on that he was a caricature artist and he did before there were photo booths he did print on site with just a camera and a laptop and he didn't want to do the photography part of it anymore so he brought me in on that and that's what got me started on the photo booth thing um so the first big event we did together was for NBC and it was a premiere party for the TV show law and order LA. That's no longer on TV, but they wanted for their giveaway, they wanted to do a mug shot. So, you know, a photo of a person with the lines in the background that show like how tall they are, like an actual mug shot. And they wanted it on a coffee mug and they wanted to be able to give it to people right there on the spot as their little giveaway to take home with them. And they called all these huge event companies and everybody kept telling them, no, you can't do that on site. Um, you know, we, we'll take the photos and we have to order your mugs and it's going to take like two weeks and then we'll deliver them. And they're like, no, that defeats the whole purpose. This is an event. People are coming from all over the country. We want to give it to them right there. So we were like one of the last ones they called. And he got me on the phone on a, on a conference call and they said, can you do this? And I said, I said, I tell you what, I'm pretty sure we can. Give me 24 hours. Let me do a little research because it's going to take some new equipment we don't have and I'll let you know for sure. And I, I researched it. I found everything we need and I said, sure, we can do this. This is what it's going to take. We need this much space. It's going to cost, you know, this much. They didn't bat an eye. You know, it was like a $15,000 <laughs> gig. It was what they really wanted. It was what they really wanted. And we said that we could do it. And we had like a staff of 10 people. We delivered to them on site. It was the hottest day of the year on the rooftop of the W Hotel, right on uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, we were up on the pool deck. Even at night, it was something ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure you're used to it in Arizona, but at night, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. 115 degrees. Oh, my gosh. That's and at night? Yeah, at night, right That's next to the pool. So we felt that like humidity <laughs> coming off the pool as the water evaporates. But uh. they wanted, um, where all the production was going on, making the mugs, they wanted it like a back of the house kind of hidden thing. So they put them all in a tent up on the pool deck and all these to transfer the photos of the mugs. It takes a heat press that gets up to like 800 degrees. And we had like six of them in this tent, all giving off heat. Um, and it got so hot in there that it actually shut down some computers just from wow. the ambient air temperature. And we're like, it's, you got to get up to like 120 degrees for it to actually shut down a computer. <laughs> yeah. That must be a, but, but just, yeah, but just being, um, being flexible like that 
and, yeah, and not yeah. say, no, it can't be done. I said, like, well, wait a minute. I think it can be done. Give me yeah. a day. And, and we got the gig and we got kind of known for that. Um, I had another one I did last year that was for like an Airbnb in Tahiti. Like, unfortunately, I didn't get to go to Tahiti. It was the event was here in Hollywood, but they were trying to sell this service to people with a lot of money. And they said, what we need to do is we need to have a photographer that will come in, take pictures of the event. As you're taking photos, we need them posted live in real time to um, a Dropbox. So that way someone in Tahiti can view them and put them on the social media site in real time. And they talked to all these photographers and like, oh, no, we after, you know, we take the photos, we need to touch them up. You know, they they need to be run through Photoshop and Lightroom and this and that. I said, no, I can do it. I have a hundred percent confidence in the quality of my photos that you can take them right off the camera and they're going to look great. <laughs> and I've got the software that I can walk around with a tablet tethered and I'm going to shoot and it's going to upload instantly to a, my Dropbox that I'm going to give them access to. They're going to pull them right from that Dropbox and within a minute, they're going to be on their Instagram. <laughs> that was what they wanted or you made that? That was exactly what they wanted. Oh. And everyone else kept telling them, no, 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 we can't do that. We got to touch them up. And it's no, I see. I started out shooting film. I start, started out doing photography with film. Yeah, but so we didn't get to look at the back of the camera. So I have one shot. confidence. <laughs> yeah, you get one shot. You don't get to see it till after the film's developed. Yeah, even know if they blinked or not. Sheesh. <laughs> so, um, final question I wanted to sure. bring up, um, and this is more just a talking point: is our labor pool for everybody um, mm -hmm. going forward? Do you do you think it's smaller? Because I I'd have to say, exiting COVID, I think our labor pool of people that are qualified to do our job and available to do our job, because mm -hmm. qualified that amount of people will still be there. Available right. and willing, I think there's going to be a lot less of. Absolutely, um, you've got a lot of people that were doing this and they were getting by and making an okay living. Um, but maybe didn't have the savings or didn't get creative with alternate streams of income and they have to get a regular job now, a warehouse job or mm -hmm. stocking shelves in the market or whatever. Um, and those people are going to get used to that income and that regular paycheck and they're not going to be available right away. Um, so that's going to, you know, open it up for the people who have stuck with it, who this is what they do. And as soon as it opens up to where events can be done, I mean, we're going to be the first ones they call. Right. And I, I, <clears throat> I thought about that and I want to brace people for this because that this thought that I had coming forward kind of puts a stop to that. Yes. There's going to be a smaller group of people that are able and willing to do your job which mm -hmm. means more work for the people that stuck with it that are capable of doing that job. But I don't think the quantity of work that we want is going to come back like we want. So I don't, I've, 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 I've heard this said a couple of times so that I haven't heard the second part said, I don't think people should over, you know, I, I think people should keep their expectations fairly low once they once things start returning to normal and people start gathering in large events, right. because it's not going to be an explosion of work like they might think. It's an, I don't I don't think it's going to go back to the good old days a couple months ago. Um, even I, a year. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean I I, I see it both ways. Um, I I I know it's going to change definitely, um, but. And one of the big things that's going to change is when the events start back up, they're, they're going to change like what their maximum occupancy is at the venues and letting people in and things like that. And even, even Which, how many tickets they sell for events. Yeah. But, but I are think they gonna have doing, to inflate, sorry, go, I was going to say, are they going to have to inflate the rate of tickets or is overall money pool going to be smaller? And which means we're all going to get, I, paid. <laughs> I think depending on the event, um, it's going to, it's going to inflate somewhat the rate of the tickets. Um, I, every, everybody's going to have to adjust and everybody's going to have to accommodate. Um, venues are going to have to get, you know, 
creative to get those clients back in for those events. Um, but I think that the event promoters, the people putting on the events are they're just one way or another, they're going to have to raise the rate because they're going to have a smaller number of people, but they, they're going to have to make that event stand out to get those few people they can come in. They're going to have to raise um, the production quality and everything on their events. Um, and not, not just the event promoter, but I mean, I like, cause a lot of what, what I do is conferences and trade shows. I'm, I'm looking even at those individual vendors that are there. Everybody's going to have to, you know, raise the bar on what well, they have and what they offer. If that's the case, it's going to be a tug of war between what clients expect and what people can provide because a lot of those yeah. people, um, were, relying partially on outside vendors to supply some of what they need, whether by partnership or sub rental. And yeah. some of those partnerships may have gone away. People are selling off gear. So yeah, yeah I don't, I don't think when we come back, um, you know, basically if somebody pays for an eight light show, we used to give them 10 or 12 lights plus some extra sure. fuzz. Um, and now I think it's going to be much more cut and dry. People are going to be. I, I, I think it's going to be cut and dry, but I, I think, I mean, every, everybody's going to be hurting for money. Everybody's going to be looking for a deal. So I think those, those vendors that can be a little more accommodating, yeah, you true. Know, if you, if you say, you know, this is how much it is for an eight light show or a 12 light show or whatever. And if someone says, well, you know, I've, I've, I've got, you know, X amount of dollars for my budget, but I'd really like, you know, 12 to 15 lights. Yeah. So if, if it's not completely unreasonable, I think the people that can be accommodated like that, they're going to be the ones that get the gigs and they're going to be the ones that continue to get the gigs going forward. So you're saying, I, I think, I think the one you, you can offer is King coming back. What, what you can offer and being, being flexible and accommodating to an extent. I'm not saying you have to give stuff away all the time, mm -hmm. um, but just being, you know, being, being compassionate to knowing that, Hey, you know, we've lost, everybody's lost money this past year. And, you know, now we're coming back and, you know, you help me out and give me the gig. I'm going to help you out in every way that I can. Right. And what I've been kind of telling people, if, you know, once, because I've been getting a couple of live streaming gigs where mm -hmm. either I go in and provide them live streaming services or just be a lighting operator for their live stream. Sure. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I, I start by saying what my rate was pre COVID and I tell them, obviously budgets are kind of shot out of the water. What is your budget? What can you work with? And right. they'll tell me a price. And if it's way under my price, that's okay. At least I'm making some money. I'll ask exactly. them, what else could I get in? Do you, you know, all the way from gear trades to plug um, my business. Yeah. You know, plug, say, hey, late, lighting was provided by, we want to thank, yeah, we want plug, to thank Caleb for coming in and setting up this it. awesome lighting. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So you can negotiate that. Um, so physical things or announcements and plugs, um, or just like if the artist comes in, making friends with them and offering them your services. Uh, you know, after getting, after getting permission from whoever's hosting the event, obviously, but you know, it, it basically, if somebody, if, if this production company calls me for a live stream and says, we can only pay you 50 bucks, but we're bringing in this artist. I say, okay, 50 bucks is really low. Can I approach that artist, make friends with them? And then mm -hmm. later, offer them my services as long as I'm not sure. stepping on your toes. Right. Pre pre COVID, they would have been like, that's a little tacky. No, right. we're, we're going to consider somebody else. But after COVID, they're like, yeah, sure. Just, you know, don't, don't offer them exactly what we're offering them. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so cool. Cool. Well, uh, I think that touches up at anything. Do you have any last comments for just, you know, everybody, stay strong out there. It's, it's taken a little time, but, um, taking more time. It's, than I thought. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's taking, it's taking more time than we all thought, but it's, um, things may not go exactly back the way they were, but things will get back to some type of normalcy. 
um, try and look at the silver lining of everything and stay positive. You yeah. Know? yeah it's it, for me, it's like, you know, yeah, I'm home and I'm not out working. I'm not out traveling. Like I used to be, and I like to, but the silver lining is I'm home with my family. Mm-hmm. You know, and all the years that I've been traveling, I, you know, my, my wife is, she says, you know, how many birthdays have you missed? I, I haven't, I haven't been home um, on the 4th of July in like eight years. Wow. And now you're finally I've, home. I've, I've had a recurring event on the 4th of July every year for like the past seven or eight years. Um, so this year, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be home. I was home for mother's day. I was home for Easter, but then I was this, home. The, the problem with this year's 4th of July is it's not the same as all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, so you I almost know them another 4th of July. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it, I mean, it, it's it's all about being positive and looking at the yeah. silver lining and all of it, um, you know. And it's also just it, I'd say expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Be be ready for it. You know, prepare for the yeah. worst, but hope for the best. Yeah, you know, I, I I hate to say it, but some of the clients I've been going with um, that aren't giving me work for the time being, I'm entertaining other options just because I have no choice. You know, I'm still keeping them reserved as soon as they call. I'm going to give them, I'm, I'm going to give them the right away. Right. <laughs> we got, we got to make hard decisions nowadays. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's not to say I went a different direction from Dupree dance. You know, obviously they're, you know, <laughs> they really like working with me and I like working with them, but, um, sure. but yeah, it's just, just anything you got don't don't count on something in sept or let's see what month is it may don't count on something in july um and shoot down an opportunity if they right. haven't if they haven't confirmed anything that's what i'm saying right Expect the unexpected i'm absolutely i mean yeah that the event that was supposed to happen the week of july 4th that i was holding out for um we didn't get notice until i think it was last week that it, yeah, the event was officially canceled. It was a it was really a, short. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a dance event in Nashville, mm-hmm. um, and we did that same event last last year. Was the first year I took the whole family. It was in Vancouver, and um, we loaded up the whole family and made like a road trip out of it. And we drove up to Vancouver, took like three days to get there. We were up in Vancouver for a week, um, and then took another week to drive home in the RV. So, and wow. just you know, made like a three week trip out of it. So we were planning to do the same thing for this one in Nashville. Um, it would have been longer cause it's farther, but now um, we're still going to do something, but now we're not going to be constrained by having to get to a certain location for an event. Yeah. So. Cool, man. Well, uh, I'm gonna let you go and get out of here myself. All right. So uh, thank you for joining me and um, I will let you know when I come on next. Sounds good. Let me know. I'd love to be part of it. Cool, cool. Thanks, Will. All right. Have a good one. Well, that's it for today. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'll be here next week. I'm kind of taking this low key for now. I didn't uh, like like I mentioned about uh, what was that word? I'm forgetting some words right now. Okay, uh, the, the the words leaving me, but it was it was when you had to do something over and over. Look, uh, maybe this will be a thing that as soon as the podcast ends, all of my words leave me. But oh, uh, commitment, commitment. Um, I committed to four days a week of this podcast, and I don't think that's practical. So I'm gonna do one day a week um, going forward. So tune in next week. I don't know who my guest will be. But uh, I look forward to seeing you guys all. So take care, everybody.